fixing the money thing. All right, we're going to take a look at Joshua chapter 6 and do a quick review, verse number 2 through 5. Then the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have delivered Jericho into your hands. Now, just a reminder, Israel had come out of Egypt, crossed the wilderness. They're now at the River Jordan, and they are crossing into the land. Jericho is the first city they are coming to. And uh, these cities are being destroyed because of their practices. People say, why are these cities being destroyed? Because of their their, uh, demonic practices, God is bringing judgment on these people and uh, moving Israel into that land. So, see, I've delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carrying trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up, everyone straight in and capture it. Say the word straight in. Straight in. Straight in. No obstacles. The whole wall, the whole wall is collapsed. Of course, we know the story except one little part. Can someone tell me what it was? Rahab, the prostitute, remember, saved the spies' lives. And that part of the wall, she had a scarlet ribbon hanging out the window, did not collapse. And of course, she's listed in, in the genealogy in Matthew uh, in regards to the uh, genealogy of Jesus Christ. An interesting story. All right, let's move on. So this is what happened. Joshua chapter 6, verse 20. Now we're dropping down a few verses. When the trumpet sounded, the army shouted at the sound of the trumpet. When the men gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. So everyone charged straight in and they took the city. Now, there was no more defense. Walls are put up for protection and to keep people out, correct? It's a defensive measure. And I read this last week and the week before, and we want to just bounce off this scripture and review. Matthew 16, 18, Jesus said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates of hell, the gates of hell. Gates are what? What are they for? Defense. Jesus said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell cannot stop it. Cannot stop it. Gates are defensive. I said last week that unfortunately it seems many, many Christians focus more on their authority to stop the devil. Remember I read John 10, 10 last week, the thief comes only to kill, steal, and destroy, and Christians go, yeah, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, right? We have authority against him, correct? He, the walls are down, he has, but they don't read the second part. I said last week, it says, And I've come to give you life and life more abundantly in the name of Jesus, in the name of... See, the same authority that stops the devil brings the abundant life. You see, people have got to focus on where they're headed, not where they're coming from. And I'm tired of of going to Christian Bible studies and everyone's talking about how the devil's attacking their life that week. You should be talking about the goodness of God, the abundance of God, the promises of God, where you're going, the authority... The walls are down. Satan has no more, zero, nothing, no authority, zero. You getting this? Matthew chapter 16, Jesus said, again, this is review, I'll give the keys of the kingdom of heaven, the authority of the kingdom of heaven to your pastor. (laughs) Well, thank God I have it, but guess what? You have it. You have the key, you have, you have the same authority Jesus did when he walked the earth. Jesus said, the same things you see me do, you will do. You have exactly the same authority, the same spirit of God that brought Jesus out of the grave, the Bible said, dwells in your body. Amen. Same power. So, 1 John 3, 8. The reason Jesus appeared was to do what? Destroy the devil's works. You're the body of Christ, what's your mission? Destroy the devil's works. That's your mission. So listen, I want you to remember this phrase. You are on offense. You are not on defense. I'm, Christians, stop patty-caking with demons. Stop talking fear. Stop talking about the devil's after me. Stop saying, you know, the last time I, I stepped out, all hell broke. Just stop all that talk. You ha- you're in charge. James chapter 2, verse 19, you believe there's one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. And tremble. 
that was review. It's setting the posture. I want to go through today's lessons, Mark chapter 16. So open that up, Mark 16, verse 17, 18. And these signs will accompany those who believe in my name. They will drive out demons. One, you can write these by numbers if you want. Number one, drive out demons. Number two, they'll speak in tongues. Number three, pick up snakes with their hand. Number four, drink deadly poison and it will not harm them. Number five, they'll place hands on sick people and they will get well. There are five things the Bible says which are evidences or signs that the believers will do. And notice, interesting enough, number two, they will pray in tongues. They'll speak in tongues. Now, it says here, these signs will follow them who believe. I'm not saying this. This is what the Bible says. Every believer should speak in tongues. I didn't say it. It says it right there. The devil hates, hates what you're going to hear today. He does not want you to understand. It's passed away, Pastor Gary. The apostles, it passed away. All miracles. This stuff. The enemy does not want you to know the authority that you have. He doesn't mind you being in church on Sunday morning. He just doesn't want you to be in church on Monday through Friday and Saturday, okay, the whole week. <laughs> Luke chapter 10, verse 17, the 72 returned with joy. Jesus sent 72 disciples out on a mission. They came back with astonishment, really. Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven, meaning he has no authority, no jurisdiction. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and overcome some of the power of the enemy. Does it really say all? All the power of the enemy? And a few things might harm you, but no. no. What does it say? You should write this down someplace, friend. Listen, I'm telling you. The devil's a bluffer, a liar. He's going to tell you that uh, whatever it is is going to take you out or mess you up, cost you a bunch, whatever. He's going to lie to you. He has no authority. And now, how many have walked on grass yesterday, anytime during the day? Were you concerned about the grass? Oh, the poor, I'm, tromp I'm trampling on the grass. I guarantee you did not even think one thought about the poor grass. You know what you're thinking about? Your mission, where you're going, right? This is how much thought you should give to the enemy. Again, I'm tired of Christians singing the praise of the enemy and the demons and all the things he's doing in the earth and all that stuff. And listen, you're on assignment to, to plunder his kingdom. The walls are down. Go straight in. Do not veer. Straight in and kick his butt. Get him out of the way. Get the job done. That's how it's supposed to be. And by the way, his only, his only offense is um, brainwashing, fear. I don't know if you've noticed, I, I've talked to Drenda about this. It's incredible. On the TV networks, the, what happened to selling bread and milk and uh, th things, consumer goods, through advertisements? Every single ad is a drug. Have you seen that? It's like every time a commercial comes on, it's about these drugs. That if you have a hangnail, we got a cure for you. And then comes this 35 list of things that will kill you besides the hangnail. And it's like... If you didn't know it was the disease, you didn't know the disease existed, you know it now. It's all part of the propaganda to make you think, whoa, that could happen to me. What? That could happen to me. Oh, that might happen to me. Oh, I don't know, but I, you know, I got to be careful. That could happen to me. Stop it. It's not going to happen to you. I just read to you what the Bible says. This is your kingdom legal handbook. <laughs> your kingdom legal hand, but wait a minute, nothing by any means shall harm me in the name of Jesus. All right, now again, we talked about our authority being used to stop the devil, but we need to, remember I said last week, you're, you got to think more about where you're going than where you came from. We got to talk in the name of Jesus, the abundant life. You got to call the demons bluff in the name of Jesus. Now you have authority to cast out demons, number one on the list. You have authority to cast out demons. Uh, we've dealt with demons. I hope you do because it means you're hand to hand with them. That's okay. You're supposed to be. And uh, so we had, we had a young lady, we, I was just preaching one day, a young lady right on the front row began to slither like a snake and began to take her clothes off. That will stop a service, trust me. It will definitely <laughs> cause a disruption. <laughs> Anyone here that day, some of you older folks? Durando, of course, anybody else? Anyone else? The old, back in the very beginning of church. So we went down, to, and uh, here's the thing. Uh, when we stopped, she levitated. Listen, the devil loves attention. 
He wants to spook you into believing you don't have authority over him. So why does she levitate? To spook us? Whoa. Whoa. I hope the name of Jesus is big enough to handle it, right? He's, he's going to try to spook you, right? He's going to try to, to put fear in that situation. Well, we dealt with it, and then the demon began to speak to us, began to tell us about this young lady, how she's worthless and all that. Well, we told her to shut up. I don't want his opinion of anything. Eventually, we cast out, I don't know, we, I don't know how many it was, 19, 20, something. I don't know how many demons were cast out of her. But she's whole today, married, has children in the kingdom. <laughs> Praise God. Now listen, although you may say it's kind of a, maybe a, an adrenaline rush to see demons squeal and to, you know, see your authority operate, here's what I want to get across to you today is that you'll see more demons squeal through having truth than actually casting them out. We have so many stories in this congregation of freedom and deliverance and just story after story, I have not laid my hands on most of them. Now, laying on the hands is a biblical doctrine, but a citizen already has legal rights. If you'll teach them to exercise their rights and what they expect as normal, guess what? The demons will squeal and back off because you know who you are. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing and thanks for watching.